Throughout the course of his presidential campaign, Donald Trump was extremely harsh on Hillary Clinton, and rightly so, because she was just way too cozy with Wall Street, specifically Goldman Sachs. And Goldman Sachs is a criminal institution that was responsible in part for the crash in 2008. Now, Donald Trump, almost as soon as he was elected, started doing exactly what he criticized Hillary Clinton of doing. He began to get extremely cozy with Wall Street, and particularly, he's been really brazen about the cozy relationship he's cultivated with Goldman Sachs. And this is all going to lead to another crash. So The Intercept explains the continuity of Wall Street's dominant role in American politics, regardless of what party sits in power or how reviled the financial industry finds itself across the country, was perhaps never more evident than when Jake Seward, now a Goldman Sachs spokesperson on Tuesday, praised the selection of Jim Donovan, a Goldman Sachs managing director for the number two position in the Treasury Department under Steve Mnuchin, himself a former Goldman Sachs partner. Mnuchin and Donovan are just two of five Goldman expats in high-level positions on Trump's team. Steve Bannon spent unlimited time at Goldman Sachs, but White House assistant Dina Powell, who headed the bank's philanthropic efforts, and National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn, Goldman's former president, had higher-ranking positions for a longer period. Jay Clayton, Trump's nominee for the Securities and Exchange Commission, was a partner for Goldman's main law firm, Sullivan & Cromwell. White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus reportedly blocked Donovan from Treasury initially amid fears of an image problem with too many Goldman guys, but Donovan got the post anyway. Other big banks are represented inside Team Trump as well. Several expats of Mnuchin's One West Bank, which repeatedly brutalized homeowners during the foreclosure crisis, have been rumored for key spots at the banking regulations. The same day as Donovan, Trump announced the nomination of David Malpass as Treasury Undersecretary for International Affairs. Malpass was the chief economist for Bear Stearns right before the investment bank imploded. He literally wrote an opinion piece called Don't Panic About credit markets for Wall Street Journal in August of 2007, noting housing and debt markets are not that big a part of the U.S. economy. Banks have celebrated since Trump's election, composing the lion's share of the Trump bump in stock prices. Goldman Sachs shares have risen from $181.92 on election day to around $250 today, an increase that accounts for as much as one-fifth of the total rise in the Dow Jones Industrial Average over that period. Not only do Goldman executives benefit, but so do their alumni. Cohn received nearly $300 million in severance from Goldman after moving into government. He's vowed to recuse himself from anything directly affecting his former company, but that doesn't necessarily apply to tax and regulatory policies affecting the entire financial sector. So, Donald Trump is doing everything that he criticized Hillary Clinton for, but perhaps to an even worse extent. You cannot continue to appoint people from this criminal institution, Goldman Sachs, and expect there to not be harmful consequences. I mean, that's putting aside the obvious conflict of interest and the issue of corruption, but these people should be in jail right now, and you're appointing them to your administration, and the overall takeaway from this isn't just that corruption is a problem, but you are making us vulnerable to another economic crash because the people who helped crash the economy should not be regulating the market that they were previously working for. It, this is just ridiculous. And someone who I absolutely respect, Noam Chomsky, warned that he is leading us down a very dangerous path. President Donald Trump's decision to load up his cabinet with Wall Street insiders has put the U.S. on a collision course to another crash, and that taxpayers will once again be expected to pick up the tab. This is what Noam Chomsky is indicating. He states, as soon as Trump was elected and since stock values in financial institutions escalated to the sky, he continued, investors are delighted. He's going to eliminate regulations and let them make more profit. Of course, it'll lead to another crash, but that's somebody else's problem. The taxpayers will take care of that. So, I mean, Donald Trump duped over people. One of his last campaign ads was talking about how the political establishment, they're so entrenched with special interests, and now here he is doing everything he was critical of uh, when it comes to Hillary Clinton and the establishment and even other establishment Republicans. So, he claimed that they were puppets, and now, after taking money from these criminal institutions that crash the economy, he is being their puppet. And yes, corruption is a problem. I think it should be the center of the story, 
but the consequences of this are far worse. I think we're going to see another economic crash because of his irresponsibility, because you are appointing people to regulate the industry that they are a part of. Well, obviously, they don't want to regulate this industry, and they will facilitate the deregulation of Wall Street, and when that happens, we're going to see the same thing we already saw. We saw how this book plays out. We know what happens. We have spoilers. Stop allowing people to regulate the industries that they came from. It hasn't worked in the past. It's never going to work. This is why we say that the game is rigged. We need a political revolution because no matter who you elect, they're always beholden to the people that donated to their campaigns. They're always beholden to these large multinational corporations and financial institutions that screw us over, that crash the economy, and force us to bail them out. Well, I'm done with that. We shouldn't be rewarding Goldman Sachs. We should be putting their executives in jail after what they did in 2008. But Donald Trump, he's a billionaire. He doesn't understand our frustration with the big banks. And anyone who voted for him was complete and utterly duped over. So I, I felt bad for those people because, man, you were played. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.